Chapter 5 The Ten Day Trial Daniel was subjected to temptations as severe as any that can assail the youth today. Yet he was true to the religious instruction received in early life. He was surrounded with influences calculated to subvert those who would vacillate between principle and inclination. Yet the Word of God presents him as a faultless character. Daniel dared not trust to his own moral power. Prayer was to him a necessity. He made God his strength, and in all the transactions of his life, the fear of the Lord was before him. Daniel possessed the grace of genuine meekness. He was true, firm, and noble. He sought to live in peace with all, but wherever principle was involved, he was as unbending as the lofty cedar. In everything that did not come in collision with his allegiance to God, he was respectful and obedient to those who had authority over him. But he had so high a sense of the claims of God that the requirements of earthly rulers were held subordinate. By no selfish consideration could he be induced to swerve from his duty. The character of Daniel is presented to the world as a striking example of what God's grace can make of men fallen by nature and corrupted by sin. The record of his noble, self-denying life is an encouragement to our common humanity. From it we may gather strength nobly to resist temptation, and firmly, and in the grace of meekness to stand for the right under the severest trial. Daniel might have found a plausible excuse to depart from his strictly temperate habits, but the approval of God was dearer to him than the favor of the most powerful earthly potentate, dearer even than life itself. Having by his courteous conduct obtained favor with Melzar, the officer in charge of the Hebrew youth, Daniel made a request that they might not eat of the king's meat or drink of his wine. Melzar feared that by complying with this request he might incur the displeasure of the king and thus endanger his own life. Like many of the present day, he thought that an abstemious diet would render these youth pale and sickly in appearance, and deficient in muscular strength, while the luxurious food from the king's table would make them ruddy and beautiful, and would promote physical and mental activity. Daniel requested that the matter be decided by a ten days trial. The Hebrew youth during this time, being supplied with simple food, while their companions ate of the king's dainties. The request was granted, and Daniel felt assured that he had gained his case. Although but a youth, he had seen the injurious effects of wine and luxurious living upon physical and mental health. At the end of the ten days, the result was found to be quite the opposite of Melzar's expectations, not only in personal appearance, but in physical activity and mental vigor. Those who had been temperate in their habits showed a marked superiority over their companions who had indulged appetite. As a result of this trial, Daniel and his associates were permitted to continue their simple diet during the whole course of their training for the duties of the kingdom. The Lord regarded with approval the firmness and self-denial of these Hebrew youth, and His blessing attended them. He gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. At the expiration of the three years of training, when their ability and acquirements were tested by the king, he found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. The life of Daniel is an inspired illustration of what constitutes a sanctified character. It presents a lesson for all, and especially for the young. A strict compliance with the requirements of God is beneficial to the health of the body and the mind. In order to reach the highest standard of moral and intellectual attainments, It is necessary to seek wisdom and strength from God and to observe strict temperance in all the habits of life. In the experience of Daniel and his companions, we have an instance of the triumph of principle over temptation to indulge the appetite. 
It shows us that through religious principle, young men may triumph over the lusts of the flesh and remain true to God's requirements, even though it cost them a great sacrifice. What if Daniel and his companions had made a compromise with those heathen officers and had yielded to the pressure of the occasion? By eating and drinking as was customary with the Babylonians, that single instance of departure from principle would have weakened their sense of right and their abhorrence of wrong. Indulgence of appetite would have involved the sacrifice of physical vigor, clearness of intellect and spiritual power. One wrong step would probably have led to others. Until their connection with heaven being severed, they would have been swept away by temptation. God has said, Them that honor me, I will honor. While Daniel clung to his God with unwavering trust, the spirit of prophetic power came upon him. While he was instructed of man in the duties of court life, he was taught of God to read the mysteries of future ages and to present to coming generations, through figures and similitudes, the wonderful things that would come to pass in the last days. Youth's Instructor, June 25, 1903